Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing very well. How are you? Good. No, same. Same. Um, tell me how it's been. It's been it's been a minute since we've chatted. So tell me what's yeah. going on. I um well the latest news is I was um, checking Amazon. Yeah. And uh, apparently, I wrote a book in 1995, a pet book about dogs. Um, I'd forgotten I'd written it. But apparently, Michael Finley wrote and published a book about uh, how to look after your dog in 1995. Is it? I mean, so, and is it attached? To, I mean, is it? Is it? A, first of all, is it a real book? Is it attached to your? Yes, it's a real book. Yes, but there, there's no information about the author except that it's my name. So right. But do they like when? I don't know how the search works, but does it? If you search your name on Amazon, does it bring this book up like it is your book? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because the reason I did it is because I just got an email from somebody saying that they hadn't been able to find the revised edition of The Value of Art. Uh -huh. So I, I just, I look, I went straight to Amazon. Yes. And I put in Michael Findlay books, and they all came up. My, mine, the ones I remember writing came up. <laughs> And there were a couple that I don't remember writing, but yeah. Um, so anyway, I uh, I'm not sure whether it's worthwhile getting a copy, but I I think it would only confuse people if I had a copy in my library. But, um, <laughs> I uh, I I mean about dogs. We you love dogs. I, I can so. Yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I know. With so, the advice, I might not agree with the advice. Right. Well, that could be the problem. So, yeah. So t tell me about the um, your uh, your you did voting. You got people to oh. vote. You went on <laughs> okay, a, that was great. You yeah, went on I, a month. yeah. We did a booth at the Capitol Hill Pride. Um, it was interesting for a variety of reasons. I was there with a number of coworkers. It was great to be out with them. Um, it felt a little bit, I, a little bit like sales. So everything we had was free. Everything was free, and you didn't need to do anything to take anything for free. And that is true of right. a number of booths. And usually, most of the nonprofit booths. They have giveaways and things. Sometimes you have to spin a wheel. Sometimes you have to answer a trivia question. Sometimes it's just all free. Um, and then sometimes they're actually yeah. gonna sell you something or they want you to sign up for something or something like that, right? So we're just giving it all away and talking to people about voting. Have you voted, blah, blah, blah. The first thing everyone came up and said, I'm registered, I'm, I'm, I'm registered. And we'd say, that's fine. We're not, we're, it's re registering people isn't our primary service. We're just doing that. If, if you need help, here's a QR code. Beyond that, we're not a voter registering company. Um, a lot of, we were in the kids section, a lot of families. Um, and so I was definitely able to, I mean, like at one point I said, you know, we, we help families find childcare. We have a family call line and, and the mother looked up and she said, oh, we're looking for childcare. You know your audience. I said, well, we, that, this is what we do. And so, I mean, I, I could- Was, was this, this was a booth, right? Yes, yes, this was a park booth and yeah. so, you know, I mean, basically we were, yes, we had a bunch of swag just to give away. We were definitely telling people about the parent line. Um, we talked less about the fact that, you know, the work that I do, which is mostly with child care providers, but we did also talk about our advocacy work that we're, we're trying to make child care affordable for all families and make child care wages a living, thriving wage for all workers, which are our two sort of year after year upon year sure. advocacy requests. Um, and so, no, it was really great to be out in the public, but it reminded me a little bit of my first, one of my earliest jobs in high school was for free admittance to Tech Billiards, which was a billiard place in downtown. Me and my friends would hand out flyers and you would have to initial each flyer with a Sharpie on the back so that if your flyer happened to get someone admitted, then you would get you know an, an extra credit or a bonus. But as you yeah. know, being in New York City, on any busy block, whether it's downtown in the village or any yeah. anywhere there's traffic, dozens of people are trying to hand you flyers. And so, um, yeah, it just brought me back yeah. to those days of trying to sort of hard sell people on something that really 
it's yeah. yeah either you want it or not it's free pool like you what you it really is a real coupon for free pool that you can get in one free game you want it or not it really is free pens and stickers do you want them or not but uh, you feel yourself hard selling just because you're there and because you <laughs> But no, overall it was good. It was good. And and the um, and the parade. Uh, yeah, the parade was the, the next pride day. Pride parade. Yeah, the parade was the next day. The parade is more people consider corporate pride. I mean, it's the one that's corporate sponsored with you know Alaska Airlines and all that. Um, back to the de night, but it, the day before, it's interesting. Some of my coworkers did make some comments about like, oh, I've never seen more nude bodies, or oh such and such, and I really kind of had to school them that, well, first of all, Pride is a protest. Second of all, specifically Capitol Hill Pride, there was this history in Seattle where the corporate entities really tried to take it over from the local businesses and they fought back, which is now why we have two Prides, one downtown and at the Seattle Center and official, and the other one that remains on Capitol Hill that remains the more scrappy for the community, by the community, and yes, it has a kid's area, but it's Still, this is Capitol Hill Pride, so yeah, you're going to see the leather daddies in their harnesses and letting it all hang out and all that, and and that's yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, oh, well, and, that's very interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's I, I, I see, yes, and I think it's important that there be spaces where people from the suburbs can come and bring their children and feel there's it, it's a space to show off to to show to yeah to include their children in that and i think for the edgier parents there are spaces where you might see uh, 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 uh something or another and that's okay or you might hear language or you might see t-shirts that say slogans that you know um my favorite one said bottoms and tops we all hate cops um that it said there. what <laughs> it said bottoms and tops we all hate cops oh i see <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah um but no overall uh, yeah it, oh and it got in capitol hill pride which is actually not the corporate one interestingly got interrupted by free palestine um by a uh, by free uh, i think i read yeah i i think i may have read about that oh yeah. interesting that i didn't know that that yeah but that i mean it wasn't well well i think it all no, it may have happened <laughs> I think it happened in New York. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for us, it was very much, they came through, they were welcomed through, they were applauded. Um, it was not a disruption or a, it wasn't an unwelcome. Some of the people, some of the people were, had signs or were saying things like, no pride during genocide, which I get, but to me that then becomes uh, uh, oppression Olympics, because pr like I said, pride is its own form of protest, and I hear what they're saying, but I also hear, um, you know, I mean, yes, just because I do believe in, in, in ceasefire doesn't mean I'm not also fighting for um, indigenous folks' rights in America, black people's rights in America, gay people's, you know, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's not either or, always, so... Yeah, that's very interesting because it's becoming that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it, it's be and it's becoming more complicated than that because yeah. it's uh, either or on one issue and then all the other issues are rolled in. So... Um, Tell, you, uh, you, uh, well, tell me what you mean. Is if you can't support one form of liberation without taking a p position on uh, Israel and Gaza. Mm -hmm. in, in other words, you're not... Right, no, right. Well, I mean, here, okay, I mean, bottom line, um, everyone's pointing fingers at everyone and saying they're anti-Semitic. And guess what? We're all right. We're all like the left and the right has issues with that right now. But just, you know, um, just like, just as they both have Islamophobic elements. Um, yeah. So, so what are we going to do about Uncle Joe? <laughs> I mean, yeah. So I, I, the week that it, the, the, did you watch it? Did you watch the debate? 
I watched the debate. I didn't watch his interview with George Stephanopoulos. Okay. Well, that's uh, the, yeah. No. Well, that's the problem with that is I don't. I didn't either. And it doesn't matter how good he go, how good he did on that one either because not well, a, people. Turn, to, he said, "I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to stop running unless God comes and tells me to." I heard that. Yes. It, it, which is like really an extreme position. Um, uh, and he wouldn't no. acknowledge. Well, no, I, mean, I thought that was actually interesting swing he, state he, messaging. I had no problem as far as anything goes. I mean, that kind of the divine intervention speech is just like I, I expect it from all politicians now, just like I expect name calling and bullying, unfortunately. But yeah, no, that I, I, I've also heard privately he's he's more. He's not a hundred. I mean, he has pride and he's he's stubborn, but he is not necessarily a hundred percent opposed to stepping down, especially in the next. He understands the next period is critical. I knew. Yeah, I watched it live. I knew almost immediately it wasn't going well. I thought, oh, no, we're not going to get to talk this week. And then I thought it doesn't matter because nine days from now we'll still be talking about it, which we are. I mean, it's it's even snowballed into an even bigger news cycle. I mean, it, it, at the time it was like, that was kind of bad, huh? And then a week later, it's, it just, I mean, it becomes even more and more hair on fire. That was disastrous. And I, it was bad, but it, I mean, I, again, I agree with some people. It wasn't even his tr losing his trail of thought, which Trump did also, by the way. Um, it was his lack of fact checking. I mean, his, la his letting just Trump kind of say anything without, are you, are you there? Can you hear me? You've frozen. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? I can yeah. hear you. Yes. So, I can. Yeah, I, I actually, I, when I, after I'd finished watching it, I thought, um, I, I thought substantially he, he was okay. And I thought the point is the media, the media, um, marks them on a different scale. I mean, the point is that, that, that Trump that Trump has established a bar which is, is non-existent. So in other words, right. he, he, he's expected to be terrible, right? Right. And, and then so, so they go, I thought that actually the media was, was at fault for spending too much paying too much attention to exactly those issues that trump supporters would be uh would be looking at in, in other words mm -hmm. they were they, they were focusing on you know on 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 the whole business of of why we have a trump which is this is about television it, right. it's not about running the country it's about television, and and I mean, how would I don't know how would Harry, I don't know do polit do politicians now? I guess I guess in the in the modern era, politicians have to be um, photo. They they have to have the same qualities as um, I don't know. I suppose uh, television presenters do. I mean, or, or people like. They have to be photogenic, and um, you know, and this has nothing to do with their ability to run the country. No. Oh well. Right? Okay. I mean, okay. Well, this is no. This is. I mean, and I this I love this topic because the intersection between politics and and glamour and fashion and appearance. Okay. So first of all, it, among the thirty thousand dollars a month that Rudy Giuliani is spending, that the his credit his debtor the people who he owes debt to 153 million think is outrageous is bronzer is bronze tanner so rudy giuliani at 90 years old still needs to so we can confirm that was hair dye running down his face and that he's still using tanner at his age to it's still important to him that to have that look um in the nixon versus kennedy vice presidential debate in i want to say 1960 kennedy wore makeup Nixon refused. Nixon, it, it, it wasn't macho. He didn't want word to get out that he was wearing makeup. He didn't, he just, he just refused. He looked nervous and sweaty and pasty on TV and lost. 
Um, I don't think a Republican ever looked back since, but I think the same is true of Democrats. I think that they're, um, yeah, I think that they also have to, they, they, yeah, it, a politician is a type of entertainer, I, in my opinion. I mean, it, 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 it's an entertainer that may occasionally get to set policy if they choose to do that, but if they choose to spend all their times in hearings so that they can get on television and get sound bites, they can choose to do that too, apparently. It's just a form of entertainer. Yeah, well, <laughs> I just, I mean, my, I, what I'm wondering is, no matter how, no matter how poorly people think, or how decrepit people think Biden is, right? Is that going to make them vote for Trump as an alternative? Um, I, I mean, if they don't like Trump. If they just don't, if they don't like Trump now or didn't and still don't, are they going to vote for him because Biden is I, decrepit? I, I mean, I I am in awe of, yeah. I mean, given how, I, I, yeah, that anyone still is unsure about Trump, like that that is still an option that you can still say, hmm, I don't know, and because I mean, these are the these are the swing state voters that he's hitting for now, distancing himself from Project Twenty Five tw or Twenty Twenty Five, even though that is literally the playbook. Um, yeah, he he will. I, people who really believe, you know, he's not just going to do whatever he wants on abortion. People who don't believe, who don't understand, the next president may very well nominate three more Supreme Court justices. People who, I don't know. I can't imagine think he would be better on on Israel Gaza than Biden, but they they just don't see him as worse, and so they just don't care. So either they're not going to vote. Or and again, I, I guess those swing state Trump voters are the same as RFK voters. Who who? I mean, you must. They're just low information voters. I I don't know people. There are people out there who really think RFK is a Democrat. Like I don't like. Look at what his his policies are for decades. Look what his all his anti-vax. Those are not anti-science. Anti. It's but someone falls for the messaging. Someone falls for. A low turnout presumably will help Trump, right? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, Biden had, uh, Biden had, so, yeah, go ahead. No, I'm just saying, so for a Democrat, they have to vote for whoever is not Trump. Mm -hmm. I mean, Biden has a vice president. If he collapses, the, or becomes a driveling idiot the day after he's inaugurated, mm -hmm. he has a vice president who becomes president, right? Mm -hmm. But that's, a, but, so, but that's, but that's her know. pitch. She's actually, but I mean, well, I mean, she's less popular. She's less, still less popular than he is. That's their boogeyman. That's what they ran, even without knowing what his performance would be. The Trump campaign during the debate ran an ad that basically said a vote for Biden is a vote for Kamala. And that's what they've been saying for months and months. There also, there's also the even wilder conspiracy theory that Michelle Obama is going to sweep in and, and, and claim the nomination at the last moment if Biden steps out. Um, a recent Maris poll shows, by the way, that she could beat Trump. Um, just hands out Michelle Obama. I don't think she wants, I, I mean, I, I think that is pure conjecture conspiracy theory. I don't think she wants to be president. I, yeah, I don't but... think she, go ahead. If you really, if you, if you, even if you don't like Kamala Harris, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you're going to vote for Trump. If you don't, if you loathe Trump, it doesn't. Right? You, no, well, no, it's not you don't like her. It's that they've convinced you she's some kind of I, leftist fat. What? Yeah, whatever. They, no, they, it's it's more than they don't but, like her. It's there is a narrative about her that is. I mean, well, it's right. massage noir. But they're never going to vote for her anyway. The people who believe that are never going to vote Democrat. Right. No, they never. Well, and they? they never were. No, that's true. They never were. Um, but there are more. So, more go ahead. No, I, I, I'm just trying to think it through because I'm really. I don't want the Democrats to fuck this up so badly <laughs> that they get Trump elected. I, well, you know? I mean, I, 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 I don't either, but I am, I, I have feared that for a long time. 
Okay, so going back to something we've been saying for a while now, at, at some point, Biden becomes the nominee. Is that when you stop criticizing him? I mean, we're almost there, or he is the presumptive nominee. That's the language they've used for the last couple months now. I mean, this is it, though. I mean, this is, I mean, and, and uh, what, I mean, it, what do you think? What do you, I mean, what, I mean, what, if, if it were your choice, what do you think? I think that I think that it is foolish of the Democrats, whether they're big donors or senators or congressmen, to think that they can replace a successful Democratic president. I mean, one who's been successful as a president. Yes. At this late date, at yeah. this, I mean, it's it 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 it's amazing to me though that we considered and we're right this to be very late in the game when the British election took six weeks. <laughs> yeah, only. I mean, it right. six weeks, and and the prime minister leaves the day he's out. I mean, leaves his <laughs> house. No, okay, all of that. I, yes, I all of that. I don't understand why. I mean, and especially since I well, since Trump, since 2015, since he rode down that escalator, it has just felt like we've lived in a in an election cycle. And part of it is he continues to hold rallies even when he's president and like all of that. But it's uh, yeah. But the fact that our cycles are so drawn out and they're so year in advance such that two years in advance such that anything the president does can be construed or accused of as as manip i mean it doesn't it doesn't make sense no you're right they should be much more compact and um no but irrespective of the uh, yeah I, I, um i also i think i think the media find it much easier to focus on the next election, whether it's four days out or four years out, yes, then what's actually going on? Yes. And the minute, minute the new president is elected, what he does is then seen by most of the media as is this going to help him get a, get reelected, <laughs> or is this going to make him popular? It, right. So it, it's as if there's a it's a it's a constant horse race, or you right. know, it's a constant. It's a constant election. Well, yeah, I mean, they don't, the pollsters so, don't stop on November 4th and say, okay, we're taking a break. We'll see you in three years. They're continuing to poll the president elects popularity <laughs> straight through, the, you know? I mean, it's, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. no, I, yeah, I think all of that is valid. Um, Yeah. Well, um, one okay. of the nicer things I see. Oh, I just wanted to 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 confirm you have a you have a big fundraiser in October. Yes, yes, and I will actually be able to make it in person because the last couple of years it's coincided with my annual trip to Las Vegas. So, and then the year before that I had volunteered at it. So, oh, will, will you will you be able to make it in person? I will. Yeah, I'm excited to be able to go this year. Oh, good. good. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to that. No, I mean, it's, yeah, we're, we're, it's, I, I, I mean, I can't believe these are the years that that was, that this is another one already, and that, yeah, that feels wild, but um, I will have been there nine years in December. Uh, really? Yep. Well, that's, that's good, though. I mean, isn't it? I mean, that's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is my, yeah. Um, it was my second job in a row. My last job, I was there exactly 10 years in this job. And I mean, and it's funny, I mean, uh, you know, even at, at our, where where was it? Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. I, this it may be a politician. Oh, I don't know, someone, but they referred to someone and they said, having only served at their post for three years. And I, and as, as someone who sits on my interview panels and whatnot, that three years is an eternity for our workplace now. I mean, we used to look at resumes and say, oh, this person's only worked two, three years. I don't know if they're loyal to a company, but now if they're not job hopping, like literally every six months, that raises a red flag. But if you are lasting one or two years at a place, 
that is normal for a, a younger person in the workplace now. It's not that there it, there's no ten years in a gold watch. Um, though I happen to be very loyal to my organization, and I think that they're pretty loyal to me too. So. Well, I'm I'm twenty three years into a job after I retired. I well I remember <laughs> yes, yeah. No, I retired. Yeah, full yeah. one job. Yeah, that I was at for sixteen years. Yes. My retirement job has been 23 years. Yeah. So if if I if I was a policeman, <laughs> I actually would have been in retirement for probably I don't know 25 years or something. I don't know. I mean, I right. I guess I chose the profession. I don't know. So, but, but uh, well, I mean, it depends on what you. But, but, uh, well, I mean, I, you. You've talked more recently about slowing down and whatnot, but I, I like to believe you still love what you do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have I have discussions with taxi drivers about this because they're they're the only other people I meet other than art dealers who are still working at my age. Right. Okay. Drivers. And, yeah. and and half of them are doing it because they have to. Yes. And half of them are doing it because they actually enjoy it. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So is that, is that it? That it's about fifty-fifty for cab drivers. Hmm. Is that it? I said yeah, cab drivers. Don't, yeah. Um, and they don't have to retire. Right. Um, I mean, or it's a retirement job. Right. Well, right. I mean, in well, no, food service, also uh, early learning, are both. They, they, these are jobs that don't have retirement or pensions or 401ks. And so you have lifers who are, are stuck, but then you also yeah. do work with older folks who maybe did retire from something else and are just doing it on the weekends or just doing it. And so, yeah, I think you do get different demographics of people who are doing it for different reasons. Yeah. All right. What about school? Well, I kind of both. Oh, go I ahead. enjoy it, and I at the moment I keep doing it. So, but yeah. that's all right. Did if I didn't enjoy it and I had to keep doing it, then it would be difficult. Yes. No. If, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you and you work this week? Did you did you work on the Fourth of July? No. 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 We closed. We closed on Wednesday at noon. Oh. Okay. We 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 gave everybody a. A very long weekend. Nice. So, uh, we and and in the summer, after after the Fourth of July, we we close on Fridays at noon. We so, do too, and that's and that's new for the last couple of years. And that's that's. I mean, we're this is the world moving towards a four day work week, and let's just keep move that momentum going because we prove it can be done. Though I don't know about you, but it does mean. You have to be really strategic how you spend those other four days because it can sneak up on you too. Well, we it the gallery has always done it mm -hmm. because, frankly, the summer is very slow. Right. No. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's not dead, but there are no, yeah. there are no, we don't have exhibitions right. in July and August, so we don't have public coming in. We're not open to the public. Right. Um, Plus, we have um, we have summer interns, um, and frankly, we struggle to find them things to do. Yeah, um, yeah. So, I mean, the summer is a time basically for plotting and planning, and, right? And 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 gearing up for the next year. So. Um, no, it's not. Uh, We've it's this part of it's part of the art world cycle, which, yeah. which is very very busy in um, April, May, and June, and then right. goes flat lines for July and August, yes. and then gets very busy again September, October, November. So it's, yeah. it's like a it's a cycle. It's a, you know, uh, ours um, is less defined i think i mean obviously with back to school september is busier 
Um, some programs are year round and others aren't. So that we we have a slightly lighter load in the summertime, but it's also as a nonprofit. Our fiscal year runs July 1st through June 30th, so we do have, especially towards the oh. end of June, a lot of things to sort of get in and finish. Then July can be a little bit quieter, but then by August we're already picking up again and then gearing up, more gearing up for September. We're helping teachers prepare so that in September they're already ready. Um, yeah. But yeah. then, yeah, yeah. and then predictably well, December is slower for us as well. Um, December is slow? Yeah, I mean, just because of holidays and programs are closed for like, yeah. especially the last two weeks. And then for us, it's either April or May is Ramadan, which is a big uh, holiday for Muslims, which is a huge population here. And so we also know for a lot of our providers, it's going to be harder to get a hold of them then. So yeah, no, I guess we, we know our cycles oh. and we plan around them. Mm, say that again. I just said we know our cycles and we plan around them. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, how about the SCOTUS immunity? I don't know. Well, I, I, the, art, the art world is changing its shape, but we don't quite know what it's going to... It, I it, mean, basically, the auction houses are not doing very well, so there's some, they usually have very big sales in London in June. Okay. And, and they, 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 they're... they're, they're they're pulling back on those, right? Um, because they're not very successful now. So, uh, I mean, they have to pretend they, they can't say that, but you know, right? Um, but but that's the fact, you know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. And what what do you think? And what do you think will happen? Or what do you think? Um, it's hard to tell. I, I think uh, right now, I think a lot of people are not doing anything because they don't know what's going to happen in November. Mm. And, and I don't, mm. that those are people, those are people who, who will vote either way. Right. I, no, either sure. Way. Sure, sure, sure. So, so, um, I guess very rich people who vote their interests uh, want Trump or they who won't raise their taxes or will lower their taxes. Right, right. There are wealthy people who will vote against their self-interest because yes. they have yes. principles. Yes. Um, but, but either way, there are people who probably say, I'm not going to spend money right now. Right. No, yeah. No. And I get that. Maybe, yeah. Maybe the economy's. Maybe I'll need it, or maybe the, the interest rates will change, or I don't know. So it's not that. So, I mean, we we've had kind of reversals that are because of an economic uh, distress, like in two thousand eight, where right. where you know where. Lehman Brothers went out and people yeah, yeah. lost money and you yeah. know but th that's not happening now it's it's I think uh, people are being cautious you know um yeah no no, so no. it's and a buy yeah. it's a it's a buyer's market um, right so you know right uh, well no so but that, I mean you know, e but even no you know I mean even that can shift things in interesting ways. I mean, it can it could maybe encourage people who didn't normally buy to start buying or, I mean, because the same thing with the housing market, it's obviously crazy, but it, it a, a new patterns do emerge. And the market will always be a market, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, think, with, I think when interest rates went up, I mean, when interest rates were low, People thought it doesn't make any difference whether I buy a painting or put the money in the bank, because if I put the money in the bank or buy shares, they're not going to go up very much anyway. Right. But now they have an alternative that of, of getting a decent return on their money. Right. And there are people now, they didn't used to be, 
who when they spend money on a painting, they think primarily about whether that's going to make money or not. Mm -hmm. But which I, I think is it's not the way <laughs> it's not the way no. to buy art. Of but course, there are no. people who think that if, if they have a million dollars to spend and they buy a painting with it, that that million dollars is not making them whatever it would make if they invested it. But but the point is that the kind of collectors that I always see, dealt with in the past, they spent money that they had made to buy something to enjoy it. Yes. No. <laughs> and yeah. The money was they considered the money to have been spent. Right. And if, if it could, I don't know, if it ended up going up in value, that was great. If it stayed the same, that was fine. And if it lost money over time, then that was the cost of enjoying it. But, you, you know, you the whole new, the new people are so people. I don't know what I mean by people, <laughs> but uh, they they think about the value of every penny they spend in other words what what else what can what can i do with it that is the best will will make me the most money which is i mean to me that's fine that's logical but is it not also that everything is transactional now everything i mean and and i mean that applies to your art collection your music collection which is curated even yeah, if it's yeah, digital yeah. um yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yes, even it you, is. Even You're your, right. even your, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, um, and that's something I noticed. Just with, I mean, with the way the world works now, everything is transactional. Your, your, the the the, the your social media posts are are intended to express how you were feeling in time, but they are also part of a personal brand that everyone has that is. Is I yeah I don't I don't know I, I I don't want to get too cynical but but no okay I brought it I, we've been kind of cross because of the internet I tried to mention yeah. a couple of, Scotus immunity what are your thoughts I, I mean what do we think about that the, on what the the Supreme Court immunity presidential immunity ruling oh oh I I think it I think I think we have. We have a a corrupt, a totally corrupt Supreme Court. I, I mean, I I don't think there's any doubt about it. It's not that they're leaning to the right. I mean, these these two guys whose wives are are, are virulent, <laughs> yeah. virulent anti-democrats. Right. I mean, active activists, right. public activists, right. should recuse themselves. Should have recused themselves. I mean, no doubt about it. I mean, it's 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 a poor, it's appalling, and I I think. I think sort of my, um, I forget what she actually said, but her her dissent was 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 very very uh, strongly worded. With you know, regard I mean, to very, our... and I agree with that. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. No, she said our basically. I'm a poor. Yeah, um, she said our democracy is in danger. I but I think what is especially shocking is that they are not even concerned with the reputation of the court they're not even concerned with you know the how all the continue i mean it, there are even more trips and more lavish donations and things keep surfacing how that looks they're not concerned with how i mean the whole thing i mean you know uh, uh, i mean there's a whole thing with her neighbors and the flag but then separately she had a separate quote around having to see pride flags and I mean, really, to me, that says, I don't want to think about Americans who exist, and I know they exist, but I don't want to have to think about them. And for someone who is supposedly impartial to be part of a community that intentionally ignores parts of America, I mean, it's just, I mean, it, but doesn't care, doesn't care what you think, doesn't care about their record, uh, you know, low approval rating, doesn't care that every time they vote 6-3 like that, it just very much confirms what we already knew, which is they are just a partisan block that is not voting based on ru the rule of law, but just based on their 
party. I mean, it's 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 all and they but they don't care. They know that Americans think that and they don't care or they don't know Americans think that because they spend all their time at Republican fundraisers with people who glad hand them and tell them they're doing great. I don't know um, where they really do live in a world where they don't have to think about people all the varieties of Americans whose lives they affect every day, they don't have to think they exist. Maybe they believe Trump that everyone, all legal scholars, wanted Roe overturned. Maybe they really believe that. I don't know. Um, maybe they live in that world. They seem to want to. Yeah, I, 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 and I wonder about the, 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 those three Republican, I mean, re Republican justices who 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 go along with Alito and Thomas? I mean, they. Mm -hmm. I mean, behind closed doors. I, I mean, aren't they appalled at their at the behavior of their fellows? I mean, they can't criticize them publicly, but. Okay, I mean Neil Gorch. Is, I mean, yeah. I mean, no. I I don't think. I mean, Roberts is the only one I would expect to maybe have a shred of dignity. But I mean, the other three, the, the, the Trump appointees, no, they're, they were garbage candidates from the beginning. Gorsuch, Coney Barrett, although she does seem to be trying to dis, she, she seems to keep trying to be like, I'm not with them, wink, wink, even though she keeps voting with them. But she writes these interesting, I don't know. Um, and then Brett Kavanaugh's, I mean, he's a, Look at his face. I'm sorry. Like, I hate to make it about appearances because I, I really, I don't love how anyone, I don't think it's, just, it's never about Marjorie Taylor's green body. It's about her policies. But, I mean, Brett. Yeah, but you, is, you, you see Brett Kavanaugh's face when he was being. Yeah. His, um, his facial expressions show how the contempt he feels for ordinary Americans. That's, that's, and having to answer to them. That's what, that's all I know about him. So why would he feel any level of shame ever? All he feels is rightful indignance because he's always right or whatever I, I don't know yeah it's uh well well yeah <laughs> i don't yeah okay what any, anything good anything you're watching anything you're hoping i'm, for this weekend? I'm watching i'm watching rig 45 which i've got on prime uh-huh which is an predominantly English language thriller in its second season about an oil rig in the North Sea oh. and murders occurring on it. It has Scottish, Finnish, Scandinavian yes. actors and actresses. Yes. And um, I was fascinated because they ended the first season with everybody being murdered except the murderer. So I wondered how they were going to manage to get a second season, <laughs> but they had. It's yeah. Good. Huh. Um, it, it's lumbering and the, the quality of the acting is not fantastic, but I, I like it. You know, it's the old. Um, Say it again. You the know, the, the Christie oh, yes. people yeah, 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 on the yeah. island. Yes. yes. You know, they're cut off and they're dying and they're being murdered. So uh, uh, that's my current. That and of, and of course for light comedy, um, Sister Boniface, who is a 1950s nun in the English countryside who solves murders. What, what, when's the show actually from? It's now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 No. no it's now. Yeah. It's a. It's a period piece. It's a very, yeah. very. It's an art. It's an artfully staged period piece of nostalgia for my generation. You yes. Know. Yeah. 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 I, I think. It's, I think it's actually. Yeah. The demographic has got to be people. Yes. Of my generation. Right. Yeah, but it, it it's very good. So, they, they it works. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, you free next week? I am. Yes. Good. Okay. Okay. Have a good week. Have a wonderful week. I love. All you. right. All right. Talk to you soon. I love you. Bye.